I'm spitting feathers here. I'm seeing stars. What are we doing? What was I even talking about? Do you know any knock-knock jokes? Oh, it's a googly eye on it. Rubbish. Ah, oh, dearie me. Ah, oh, mate, I've just locked myself out. I have to ring a buzzer. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Artisan Electrics. Today I'm going to be replacing some communal lights following a call out I had. The property has these switches. They used to be the push button ones that slowly pop out. And now we've got these electronic ones that keep failing. I made the suggestion that they install new lights because as you can see, they're not exactly great. Very dim, hard to give off any light. And a couple of the emergencies have actually failed as well. So we can replace these for LEDs. Later on, I'll go through how the lights work and the cost effectiveness for landlords to actually replace these for LEDs. Let's get into it. <sighs> See, I hate when lights do this. They give you one entry hole. Now you can guarantee that that one's gonna be in the middle. So then my light's gonna be skew if, and it's gonna end up leaving a mark on the ceiling. Rubbish. So we've got different settings on here, detection area. So we can set how far the light detects the radius on it. Um, we've got the whole time, how long it actually stays on for in seconds or minutes. And then it's got a daylight sensor. So where it's a dark corridor, when it gets too dark, it will turn the light on and keep it on in the evening. You wanna leave the simulation. You read this, you leave the simulation. <laughs> when you're setting these up and you're trying to set where you want the the sensor to start coming on they normally have a well, it's got a five second mode so you can keep walking past it and adjusting it to suit so that one up there wants to have quite a long sensor on it because it's got to pick up people coming down the stairs and it's got to pick, pick up someone around here it will have the light from probably up to about the fifth or sixth step so i'll, I'll walk up and down the stairs trying to get it to come on at the right distance <laughs> that's a nice bright emergency isn't it taking the the cables out of the breakers for isolation. I am the only person here on site and I'm going to keep the cupboard, cupboard locked as well. I mean, guess it's reckon it's going to take me to get the right key again. <laughs> oh, come on. That'd be the last one, wouldn't it? Oh, someone's had made a mess of the FB key. I was going to read what number it was, but... Mm. Right, let's, get, let's get my ladder set up. No, Mercedes have that nice. You barely hear the door shut in the quality. <laughs> the whole van shakes. <laughs> oh, I really need to get that fixed. <laughs> There's a googly eye on it. is neutral let me take a picture of it it's a bit tragic isn't it oh, i think the proving unit's broke <sighs> all right if your proving unit does break you need to use a known live source so i suppose it's one way to show how to do that so the fuse here is a known live source I can prove my lamps on that. Beautiful. God, rubbish, eh? So this is the lamp we've taken out. So this is a 28 watt uh, four pin. So the light we're installing is gonna be 14 watts. So you've halved the usage straight away. And with the way it's going to be switched, it's not going to stay on as long. So at the minute they stay on about three to five minutes each time you press it. Whereas in reality, you just want to walk past. And if there's someone still here, it will stay on, but otherwise it will go off. So it's going to save the, the client even more money. Where I keep my sleeve in, so then you're just like, oh. So here we've got our permanent live, which is going to be used to charge the battery up. Our CPC, I'm not sure why that one wasn't being used. It was shoved up into the ceiling. However, we'll persevere. 
Blacks being used as our neutral. Personally, I would use gray as neutral. We're supposed to denutralize that. So that's our switch line, which is with this one, which was unmarked. So I'm gonna mark them up brown, put all of our neutrals together, and it'll be four terminal CPC neutral, permanent live switch live, and that's it. This emergency is supposed to last for three hours. It's currently 10 to 11, so we'll see if it lasts. It's full drain down. So now I've uh, worked out the kinks of these fittings. I'm just gonna get them all set up, drilled, get all the cables into them, get all my screws and plugs and everything set up so I can just take them up to each light and then everything's set there in one place ready for me to work, um, rather than keep going up and down, up and down. Okay, so this is what I've uh, put inside each light. So I've just prepped the cables into them, ready to go straight into the Wago. Got all my Wagos here, plasterboard fixing, screws, uh, penny washers. I've done all my fixing holes and where the cable is going to be coming through. This the idea of this is just to be a little bit more efficient. Once I climb these steps, that's it. I'm up here. I'm not getting back down and not going back up and down the stairs. And everything's here where I want it in a nice tidy area. A good job I'm uh, looking at these before I take them down. So they're using the grey as the neutral, the black's the neutral here. The grey is a switch line on that cable. They've just coiled the black out of the way on that one. So um, yeah, it's always worth double checking before you take a light down. Yeah, so as we've only gotten in and out here, I actually can just put them straight in. I have prepped all of these. It's just, it's, it's probably better, it takes me five, not even five minutes, five seconds to pop these in and out uh, in case this was free plate. Um, it's just, I'd rather be prepared. So I'm just gonna whip these out and pop them, them back in. You see the, you can see the round bit there and there. Does it look roughly in the middle of it? <laughs> Great eye, mate, for a cameraman. <laughs> I didn't, I'm gonna have to go back again. I just, honestly, I'm gonna do on every single light. Oh, then it's up, up. So as you can see, our uh, emergency light is still going strong. It's been two hours. Uh, they should last about three hours. So they should be, have a full drain down test occasionally, depending on the manufacturer's spec. Um, and they should have a flick test once a week, once a month, depending on the schedule, just to check that they all come on. It's like a functional check. But these are here for, in case of emergency, if there was a power cut, if there was a fire, there needs to be a minimum lux, so a lighting level. So you imagine if this corridor is filled with smoke, there needs to be a certain amount of light to safely let the occupants escape. And that's why we install these. They do need to go at every change of direction, uh, bottom of staircase, like every elevation, sort of top and bottom, as you exit a building, there should be another light. It's quite involved in all honesty. I'm not an expert on it in any way, shape or form, but yeah, these are very important for fire safety. These are a good sweep in here anyway. I don't think the cleaner has been doing much. Dragging a rag around. Okay, this is the last one I've got inside. Just having them all with their covers off so I can do the walk by mode to set them up. Uh, so I've just got one more to connect up outside and then I'm going to be going through the switches and showing you what I'm doing there. So this has got a photo cell built into it. Well, someone's wired a photo cell into it. So this, when it gets dark, brings this light on. I don't think our ones, I'm not sure we're going to have ours like that anymore. Does that look like it lines up with the old one? So these have a built-in daylight sensor on them, so we can set the lux. So we don't want this one coming on constantly because it's daylight and it's not needed. So we'll set the lux uh, accordingly. 
Uh, so you've got two lux, 10 lux, 25 and 50 lux, or you can disable it and it will just turn on and off regardless of the light levels. So we'll set this up so that it's not coming on, it'll come on around dusk sort of time. And um, yeah, it'll save them even more electricity going forward. I nearly forgot it. <laughs> I nearly forgot it. There we go. Bosh. I haven't even connected the cables up yet, but you know what I mean. Now all the lights are done, I'm going to move on to the switches now, remove the um, push button ones and link out the switches. I'll explain when I'm there. Uh, it's got a nice warm hue. What is, how long has that been going? Ooh, two hours, 50 minutes. It's just about, I mean, I don't think it's given off much light to be fair. So this switch here, it's just a, like any switch at home. It's just live in, live out. This switch, when you press it, it's got a timer between one and 10 minutes, depending on how you set it. So you just, when you press it, it just makes the switch and it holds it for that amount of time and then lets it go. This switch here controls the two lights upstairs and there's another one that controls the two lights upstairs. So if any one of them's on, it will just keep the light on. So what we're gonna do is basically bypass that. We're gonna install a Wago across these two cables so they're permanently on because all the switching is going to be controlled from up in the light but it does give them the capability in the future if they did want to go back to a system like this the cable is still there and waiting i've seen a lot of people using bosch something in the other the little screwdriver thing oh, it seems like a right fast As I said, I would be, I'm one blank plate short, so uh, <clears throat> to the van, I suppose. Cue the sunny music. Should wear a mask taking all that plasterboard down, really, shouldn't I? Oh. blinding let me just uh, get these connected up yeah i wish i was a bit taller so these are in walk by mode at the minute but i've left the uh lux setting on so basically if it's light enough they won't turn on i mean that one isn't you can see it clicking away so if i adjust this one oh it's got something in my eye oh there it goes so now this is in walk by mode so now I can adjust the sensitivity of it. So we need to walk outside. Right, here we go. So I'm coming home, do, 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 do. open the door. That one turned on anyway. If anything, that's more sensitive. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? So that one's perfect. Well, what about this one? Where do you come on? Oh, I'd say that's good, wouldn't you? And they're all clicking away. I might turn the sensitivity down on this one. Ah, oh, dear me. Yeah, I think that's better. You don't want it being way at the door, do you? Because then the people that come in and go upstairs, you don't want this one going off constantly. So that's good, that's good. Let's play with one upstairs. I think that's pretty good. It comes on just as you get to the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> well, I'm gonna try it just from the other way. Yeah, it might be picking you up. You might have to go that side. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> Like it can hear me, right? So if we come downstairs, yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? So you're good. This one is still set to the wrong lux. Oh, my eyes! <laughs> they can hear you, mate. Mm. Don't know. That's not that sensitive, is it? But mind you, it might pick me. See if it picks me up when I can't stairs. I'd say that was all right, wouldn't you? They're not all the right warmness either, are they? I need to change them. Oh my God, this is like a cardio workout. <laughs> I'm seeing stars. Oh my gosh, this is too high. Oh. oh. 
Oh, hang on, I'm stuck in a bit of a loop here. Yeah, that sounds about right. They'll come on as soon as they come out of their house. I have a feeling that I need to check that. I put what I thought was a switch line in, but I don't think it is a switch line. Got to sneak up on it, mate. I might startle it. God, I've got to basically walk into it before it turns on. Let's put it a bit higher than that then. God, you've got to practically walk into it. No, let's change that. I'm spitting feathers here. Yeah, that'll do, wouldn't it? We don't want it coming off constantly if a cat's going by. Right, so this is now is going to be changed so it doesn't come on in the daytime. So we don't need light right now. So I'm going to change the lux level to 25 lux, which is the middle one on. Boop. That should stop it coming on during the, the day and then only at night would this just come on just as someone's coming from the front door. In fact, let me step out. I haven't done it this way, have I? Do you know any knock-knock jokes? <laughs> Does that say it off? Hmm. Oh, mate, it's just embarrassing. We're supposed to be a professional company. Um, I'll just lock myself out. I'll have to ring a buzzer. <laughs> Hello. Hi there, sorry, it's the electrician. I've uh, locked myself Hi, out. No Thank you. What are we doing? What was I even talking about? I just I need them shades. You know when you've had like eye surgery? <laughs> it's like a complete blackout. So now the Lux has been set on this, it's staying off as you can see. And if I go inside, these ones switch on straight away. So it's gonna save the client money overall because it's not gonna keep switching on unnecessarily. So this is the emergency test switch. You need a little key like this, a fishtail. That just pops in there and changes it over. So if we look at the emergency now, you can see it's much brighter than the old one. And nice and bright again. Uh, so these would just have a functional check, so you just flick that and walk around, check they've all come on once a month and then every 12 months these would then be checked for a full three hour drain down. So you'd flick them off, preferably in the daytime, and then come back, make sure they're all on and then flick them back on. <laughs> And this one, it's now been four hours. I mean, I wouldn't say it's going strong, but you can see at least some light there. The client's now gonna save quite a bit of money. We've replaced seven fittings, so seven times 14 watts each time they're on. Over time, with the electricity prices, that's gonna save a small fortune for them. And then with the smarter switching as well, they're only gonna be on when required and turn off. Right on cue, that turned off, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you liked what you saw, drop a like and um, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, it not worked as I hoped it would.